The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Cleaning Nation, Mike Campion here with Chad Smith. He is one of our elite members, all around nice guy. And um, actually, Suzanne, I believe, one of our coaches, advocated like, you have to share this guy's story on the show. He said, yes, here we are. Chad, say hey to Clean Nation. Hey, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> so let's start with like just demographic stuff. Then we'll get into the nitty gritty. Like where are you at? What kind of customers? Do you have employees? Do you some of the cleaning, none of the cleaning? Just give us a little bit of background. I uh, recently, about two weeks ago, got completely out of cleaning. So hey -o! <laughs> there's a caveat to that, though. I still need to set up the, I'm in a process actually tomorrow. I'm hiring someone for the floater. That's one person. So I got to hire three more. But the uh, the funneling, uh, hiring funneling is up and running. And I hold my weekly uh, uh, meetings or hiring meetings on Tuesdays. Um. We're, we, we're doing the local service ads. The, the business is coming in, man. I mean, it is like a, overwhelmingly a lot, but it's a good thing. So um, we got your, I think we set it at like 200, 300, uh, something like that. You had recommended somewhere in the emails, uh, something like that, or a video. I may have seen that on <laughs> actually. So your videos um, are fantastic. I mean, I, I would have a, a list of questions for you that I was getting ready to send through ticket. And then I started uh, listening to your videos more and I'm like, all these questions are answered. And I just cross them off. This isn't, he answered it in this video. He answered in this module. I, I just had to really go over and watch them about three or four times. Some of them even more than that, but I've well, learned so things. much. Just for the listeners. Um, if you're like, where's these videos? I want these videos. Chad's a client. So he's talking about our content within the program. Not that we don't try and do as much as we can in the podcast, but it's a little different when it's one to many and, uh, you know, in 20 minute bursts as opposed to being able as a client, take them through a process. So, all right, let's walk you through what part of the country are you in? Uh, uh, Western Pennsylvania. Okay. And medium city, big city, small city? Just uh, like yeah, it's small. Butler's pretty small. It's, uh, I mean, well, I mean, I guess it what you consider small, but a medium, I guess, medium. I think the population was like 90,000. 90,000. Okay. So it's a fair size city, but by no means, you know, top 10, 20, probably even 50 in the country. No. Um, all right. So when you, how long is it? You said you just got out of cleaning now, uh, or wait, did you say now or a couple weeks ago? To about two weeks ago, roughly. Yeah. Perfect. And when did you start the program? I know what it feels uh, like. No, just, I just hit my four week mark uh, a couple of days ago. Okay. So let's start before. How long you've been in business? Kind of where did you get when you started until what you when you reached out to us and what made you reach out and be like, I am stuck and I need some help. So walk us through kind of how you started, where you got to on your own, and what made you raise your hand and go, Okay, I want some help. Well, I started because I had ambition to be my own boss and enjoy life and not work um, all the time. But uh, so I started my business in January 1st of 2000. Um, what was it? 21. Okay, so, we're recording this August 2023. So you've had all, coming up like more than two and a half years in business. No, well, maybe it was 22. I might have got the year wrong. It's about a year and eight months in business. About a year and eight. Okay, I'm, cool. I'm terrible with numbers. So, That's how, so, so I was terrible with numbers. Year and a half to two years. Gotcha. Right. So year and a half, two years. Uh, and then I uh, just started a growing company, basically guessing. And, you know, it just kind of like I, I have a sort of a mentor. He, he has another cleaning business. He's had it for like 20 years and he has some good advice, but he kind of does things backwards now that I, I know now. But um, so and then and I, I just real got, quick, let me just bring that up because I mentioned that before you go on, because we hear a lot of people that are like, oh, I've got a mentor and mentors are great. I'm all about mentors. But let me put some caveats because sometimes people get, quote unquote, a mentor and they don't get the results they want. And they don't know why. Um, one you want to know how that person got, first of all, you want to make sure that person is successful as you define success, right? So they might be, have a larger revenue than you, but if they're not living at the profit margins that you want, like making the actual money that you want and or living the life that you want, that can be, I don't say a red flag for a human, they can do whatever they want with their life. But as a mentor, you want to make sure that they're at least living the life that you actually want. 
And then two, make sure they got there the way you want to get there. So like if, the, and I have no idea who this is, don't tell me because I want to, I'm not talking bad about it. I'm just in general, the concept. Sometimes someone's been in business 20, 30 years and they got it from their their parents. And oftentimes they're succeeding in spite of what they've, they're doing because they've been doing it for so long. So just make sure, you know, if your goal is his goal and to take 20 years and inherit something for your dad, then he's got some experience in how to do that. And I'm not saying that was his, his case, but a lot of times we're not selective enough about our mentors or even when I was younger, I wanted the mentor with the biggest business I could have. Like, you know, if I'm doing a million and I want to do two, I want to find some guy doing 50 million or a hundred billion million or a billion thinking that would be amazing. It's not because they don't know how to do that. Like if I'm in a million yeah. that I want to go to two, I want a guy that just got to $2 million or maybe three or four, right? Cause he's it, in recently, not a guy that got to $2 million 10, 20 years ago. And then has maintained $2 million. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to get someone that is a, for sure, living the life that I want and B actually has that skill set and is, has the same opportunity. I have. So just a little rant back to you, Chad. So you started a year and a half ago, you got kind of a mentor. He gave you some good stuff, but in retrospect, maybe some of the, the, the feedback was not helping continue. That is great advice, uh, by the way. Thank you for that. Um, Just like would have been helpful a year and a half ago, but here we yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you kind of learn like even some of these guys have been in business for like 30 years. They're still doing a lot of it wrong. It's not because they're dumb. It's not that. It's just they've just been taught the wrong thing for 30 plus years of their business. But uh, so, uh, yeah, a year and a half, almost two years. Um you know, I've been doing some things right, but I started listening to your, just like your clips on Instagram and Facebook and where even YouTube, some of them show up on there. I don't know if you know that or not, but, um, uh, that, that breaks and, my heart. Cause we've got like a YouTube channel with like 20,000 subscribers and Chad's like, I didn't know if you're on YouTube. I'm like, we try really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know now I knew that. Uh, oh, that's right. I did know that. So <laughs> just bust your chops, brother. <laughs> Yeah, see, I'm not a social media person, so uh, kind of don't tell anyone. Me neither. I only do it to help owners of cleaning companies, and I actually funny. We're hardly on Twitter. We don't have a lot of following there. That's the only social media I really consume on my own. Everything <laughs> else is for my clients. So it shows you what we know. Anyway, go ahead, buddy. Uh, so um, I uh, I started watching uh, grow my cleaning company for about eight months, roughly, and just listening to what you guys were saying, you and your wife and whoever else you would have on your podcast and Suzanne and there's others on there too. We have a podcast. Um, I wasn't aware. Of. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, give me on that one. Yeah. I had to take one more swing. All right, go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then I finally decided after, uh, it was like a rough week in the business. Like it was just chaos, like unnecessary, just garbage. Like and you I'm were cleaning, like, people it. were quitting. Like walk me through some of this chaos. Doesn't have to be every detail. Well, I mean, I got, I was just, I mean, I was getting accounts, but I'm just like working so much and I'm just like running myself into the ground. I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm a workhorse. I can work, but I'm like, I don't want to do this the rest of my life. That's the thing. <laughs> I want to be able to enjoy my kids, my family, fishing, camp, whatever. Um, and so I determined to uh, uh, grow the business, to spend time with my family, quality time with my uh, family and friends, and to be financially stable, to help those in need personally. So, um, and I called you guys and we, uh, you know, Mike, before I called you, I said, you know, I said to myself, and right before I got on the phone call, I said, and this is no lie. I said to myself, um, this guy knew, because I knew at the point, because I haven't watched you guys long enough. I said, this guy knows what he's doing. I don't care if it costs $30,000. I know the information he has is the information that I need to be successful and to help me grow this company and save about 15, 16 years. <laughs> so that's what drew me so, to you. Two things. One, I got to raise prices immediately, not on you, but you know all the new people. Two, what? <laughs> so this is what I'm always fascinated by, uh, Chad, because I would say, maybe 20 or 30% of the people we work with find the podcast or they find it, they just come in right away and they're like, I need help. And they just go, which is great. A lot of people take like six months, eight months a year and it's fine, but I always feel bad. Like I wish we could have saved you the time. So what in your world got you to that point? Was it just circumstances? Cause where you're like, I don't care what to call. And again, it's not so much about us. It's just about really going, I need help. I've got to get this fixed. I don't care what it costs. I've got to do it. What brought you to that point is question one. And question two is, this is a harder one. How, if, if there's any way, could have we gotten you there? Not we, but how could have you gotten yourself there earlier and save some of the headache? But let's start with one. What got you to that point where you're like, I don't care. I don't care what it costs. I've got to get help. Just the pure exhaustion of, you know, work and 
like hundred hours a week. Like I couldn't stay awake. And I just said, I can't, I don't care if I do be eight million, nine million, ten million a year. If I'm making it, I'm I'm functioning like this. I don't want it. Hmm. So uh, I'm like, and that's when I started watching you when all that stuff happened, and uh, I started to uh, you know just pay attention to you. And then your second question remind me of what the so second I, question was again. I love hearing kind of how you got to your end point. I like when you're like, even if I was. So I hear two things. One, I'm not hitting my financial goals. But even if I was, I'm so unhappy with the life I'm living, it still wouldn't be worth it. That's a pretty real conversation with yourself, Chad. Yeah, yeah, because it wasn't, I mean, money's great. I love money. Uh, I don't worship money, though. I, I love it, but I don't worship it. I, I started to realize that there was one thing more important in life, or uh, more valuable in life than money, and it's time. You can't get time back. Once you lose your time, that each second that passes, it's it's time that you can't get back. It's gone. Ask any so old person. Make the best of it. Ask any old rich person. I assure you, the vast majority would trade all their, their money for a little bit of time. So really helpful. I'm glad that you got that. So here's the, the million dollar question just for everyone else out there who's not there yet. Like, I'm unhappy. Was it that you thought you could figure it out on your own? Was you thought it would just get better on its own? Would you thought, I'll just work through it? Like, what made you go... I'm going to, I know this isn't working, but I'm going to keep doing the same thing and just hope it gets better. Like that's always what I'm trying to crack for people. It's, I mean, a lot of it, a lot of people, it's pride. I mean, people want to try to kind of invent the, invent their own wheel instead of just saying, Hey, this per guy invented this perfectly great wheel. And to it, be fair, I discovered it. I just made all the stupid mistakes you made really fast with lots of money behind it. And yes, exactly. yeah, so I wish I could say it was smart to invent. Didn't discovered, but go ahead. Yeah, exactly. And that's the, the exactly what I was going to say. It's like, why don't you just go and take advice, save yourself all those years, heartache, pain, suffering, because I mean, that's really what it is. When you're losing time, you're suffering, in my opinion. And uh, and go to a person that has been there, done that. He's he's used all that time at 20 years to save you all that time to grow this company with systems in place that make sense and that work. And I mean, they're working for me like, I mean, unbelievably amazing hey amazing people you may have noticed we don't sell a dadgum thing on this podcast we don't allow ads the only ask that can ever have of you guys is if you dig the show for you to spread the word and share so we can change as many lives as possible literally it'll take you five seconds to give us a great review and i can't tell you how much i appreciate you as a listener and value the gift of your kind words now back to the show well, so, let's dive into that. Let's start talking results for all the people. Like, yeah, yeah, Mike's great. Everybody, I should take action, blah, blah, blah. What do I do? Like, what's the, what's been the hardest thing you had to do? And what's been the easiest slam dunk, lowest hanging fruit that you've done that kind of, yeah, just we're actually, you know what? I don't even want to, I don't even formulate that tight. Just give us the results or the wins or the improvement of quality of life or business any way you see fit for you personally. Um, well, uh, the uh well the google ads was the challenging like the marketing thing was challenging for me how come but then i started to understand one fundamental basic thing about marketing and it awesome. helped me. uh with just you know well <laughs> was the finances like hey put it at this much each month 200 300 each month 500 600 you were you would throw around numbers around in podcasts and stuff because you were just giving a bunch of examples but uh so I just set it at 300, uh, the local service ads. And I'm like, you know, I'm still in a process of understanding marketing. And, you know, I haven't talked to Jared like too much, but that's going to be a thing soon. So, um, uh, you see, he, I, he's gave me some advice with billboards and different marketing strategies and had different questions I had for him. But, uh, so marketing was definitely a challenge, but you know, well, you said there was one big thing. What was the one th you said one big thing in, in marketing? Was that just how much to spend? Cause that shouldn't be that. Yeah. Big. It was just understanding the whole like concept of like how to even market. Like I just, it just boggled my mind. Like I just didn't understand any, I was terrified of it. I was just like, well, I don't want to like just throw money monthly and I don't even know what these numbers mean. And so, uh, I started to watch your videos and you guys explain a little bit. You mean, don't go into super detail with your videos. Um, then I just started uh, month doing the monthly recommendation that you recommend uh, per month for Google Ads, depending on where you're at and the results you want. And then uh, I started to pay attention to the information on the Google service ads uh, 
website and apps and started to understand it, how to, you know, what the numbers mean more. And, and, and believe me, I have a long way to go. Don't, don't get it twisted. <laughs> it's still, it's still improvement there, but, but the calls, uh, I'm working on my niche right now, which, you know, that people would only know what I was talking about. There's in a program with that, but, uh, and I think I might've found it. That it was going to be a question I'll present to you, um, uh, on uh, this week's call, so. Perfect, so a couple quick things. One, we're recording this uh, August, 2023, and as of right now, local service ads are doing great. But again, I don't want future, future, and mostly for residential, not as much for commercial. So I just don't want future people to write down, local service ads are the secret. The secret is understanding what your goals are, breaking it down into the leads, bids, sales that you need, under just under putting together a plan that's gonna get the leads that you need once you have that. Because guys, gals, marketing things are going to come and go, right? Just so you know how old I am. When I started, it was the yellow pages. Like that was a real thing where you would actually get the phone. to, And it was the phone ringing. There was no messenger or text or any of this <laughs> crap. And then the phone pages got usurped. And, you know, what was next? Probably the first big thing was like, you know, obviously back then there's direct mail, telemarketing, all the, all the kind of old school stuff was always there. But then Google ads came and that was like, shh shocking. You could pay, I mean, you could buy targeted stuff for a nickel. Like it was hot for a second. And then Facebook came along and they weren't even doing ads, just getting people to like you and making posts. And then Facebook started doing ads and there's Instagram and TikTok. And I remember for a hot second, Instagram was like, or not Instagram, uh, Snapchat. And there's just, there's always going to be a thing. So the concept is once you understand the concept of what your, how many leads, bid sales you need, how to articulate your message to your client, where they go to solve that problem, it's okay if like today it's Google service ads So maybe that'll last for three months, maybe it'll last for three years, but it won't last for 30, right? So we, you want to make sure that you've got an overreaching concept that you get and don't just put all your eggs in one basket. So as much as I love local service ads through Google for residential today, I don't know what that's going to be like tomorrow. Okay. So the marketing sounds like really, you just need someone to hold your hand and give you the confidence to walk your hand through. Like I'm trying it. I'm scared. I'm overwhelmed. You just needed someone to be like, ask a question. We're going to unoverwhelm you. Am I oversimplifying it or is that what I'm hearing you? Yeah, no, that's you're, you're the nail right on the head. I, uh, I mean, what I did, Mike was just, I, you know, in the beginning I'm like, well, I'd rather do something and, and guess and then sit here and do nothing with my hands folded. So I just started throwing things at the wall and see what would stick. Local, uh, local service ad, billboards. I don't think billboards, I, I don't know. I don't think in my, for my situation, I don't think it's really worth the money that. Not something um, I would typically recommend, certainly for the first five things to test. So I'm not saying billboards never work, but just for cleaning nation, wouldn't be my top five, but go ahead. When you see it, I understand why now. See, I understand, but because of your program, I understand. See, that's the thing. Your your program has gave, gave me knowledge, something I didn't have before. It was just all guesswork. It was all, you know, I hope this works. You know, I hope I, at least with, with your knowledge, uh, you've, you've, my percentages of success went from like 2% to like 99.9% because, you know, I have, I know what to do. I can put, you know, words into action and actions into results. So because of knowledge, knowledge is power. And I, and I appreciate you guys so much for, all the information and the bugging you with the questions <laughs> and all that stuff. So let me give a comment. Then we're going to talk about hiring. Then we'll wrap this thing. So the okay. comment, of, or actually it's really more of an encouragement for you, Chad, that clean nation, clean nation can listen in on. Um, what you, you said something you went over really quickly, but it's a big deal. What he said is I'd rather try and fail than just sit here with my hands folded and do nothing. Right. It's so freaking true. Like literally what you guys are paying me for is trying a lot of crap that didn't work and getting my head handed to me. And uh, what's the name of the book? I think it was in uh, Alex Hormozzi's hundred million dollar leads or uh, offers where he talks about, he was quoting someone else. And I can't remember who he was quoting um, talked about how there's outsized returns. So in baseball, um, you can hit a grand slam is the biggest thing you can do at bat, right? You can strike out, you can bunt, you can get a single, you can get walked. There's all sorts of outcomes, but the biggest thing is a grand slam. And that kind of depends on three other people being on base. So you might only get the opportunity for a grand slam a couple times a season that everyone's on base and you're up. Right. And the worst you can do is strike out. That's zero. And the best you can do is four points. And if that's how life worked, you'd have to be really careful how many at-bats you took. But he's like, that's not how business works. With business works, you can strike out, 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 strike out,
is a grand slam. It's not just four points. You can get 4 billion points. Like it's way bigger. So the math doesn't work to sit on your hands. Cause say you try this and it costs you 500 bucks in advertising. It doesn't work. You try this and it costs you a thousand. You try that and it costs 10,000. You try this and it costs a nickel. You try this and it costs a year of your time. You try all these things. Worst comes to worst. None of them quote unquote work, but you get so much smarter and better at trying things. That's the worst case scenario. Best case scenario, if just one thing works, you can build a million or $10 million business and that's life changing. So just by the logic of it, trying crap, whether it's coaching or advertising or software or whatever you want to try to, and again, be smarter and get better and better as you make mistakes, make smarter, better mistakes as you go. Don't make the same stupid mistakes, but making no mistakes is the only guaranteed failure. Like when you're like 2% chance or 10% or whatever you said of succeeding on my own, you might've because you kept testing stuff. But the second you stop testing stuff and say, I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing, hope something gets different, less than a 1% chance of like, how can that ever work, right? And then of course, if you find someone that's done it over and over and you do exactly what they do, the chances are super high. So I just love your attitude, Chad, of I'd rather take a swing and miss than not bad at all. Like that is in business, it is so freaking, and again, we just wanna hit home runs all the time. And sure, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you go, therefore, if I strike out a couple times, I'm never going to do that again. Like I hear people go, I tried advertising. I spent money on this advertising and it didn't work. So now I'm off on all advertising. It's like they yeah. condemn their entire business for, I tried to coach once and he, I got burned. Therefore, I'm never, you know, therefore I'm afraid to ever try coaching. And it's like the logic just doesn't stand up. So I love Chad, your spirit of, well, I got to get this figured out. And as much as I'm in love with our stuff and I'm so glad we were able to help you, had we not been able to, I'm guessing you'd have found someone else. Like you wouldn't have just given up. You would have been like, okay, that's the magic. All right. Anything to add to that before you, I'm dying to hear your story on the hiring. Cause when I get guys that were cleaning and now out of cleaning, that's my favorite. Yeah, no, just yeah, don't give up. Keep going. Don't just keep going. Whoever's listening to this or whoever may listen. That's, that's definitely the trick. If you fast forward 10 years from now and you give up today, you fast forward 10 years, you look back and go, that was the day I gave up. But if you fast forward 10 years and you don't give up for the whole 10 years, that day is just another day. And like, oh yeah, that was a year, a week, a month before I turned the corner and, and finally won. But you know, just- You got there. Yeah, at the moment when you're not giving up, it feels like the end of the story because you're living it, you can't see the future. But when you go forward, you realize that was the middle of the story, right? And you could have been yeah. like, I gave up right before I turned the freaking corner. You know, Chad could have said, I ah, forget. I'm not going to call Mike. I'm just going to, whatever. I'm going to shut this thing down. And then 10 year Chad would go, that's the day I went back to corporate. But he's like, I tried this thing. And if that wouldn't work, I would have tried another thing and another thing. So it's like, you get to decide when the story ends, but if you're in the middle of it, you don't decide when the turn to success comes unless you give up. And you don't know if you're giving up a year and 200 bad decisions before you turn the corner or one second and one good decision before you turn the corner. That's true. You give up, it's over. And as long as you're in the middle of the story, I haven't given up. It's like, I'm still in the middle. Who knows what my story is going to be? I'm not dead yet. Let's go. All right. Still fighting. Yeah. Preaching over. So what was yeah. the biggest shift in the time that we've got that got you from <clears throat> cleaner B and chaos to worker B feeling like you got a little bit, or, or sorry, from owner B to feel like you got some control of your business in your life? Well, definitely the the hiring funnel and understanding how to use that and understanding how to contact the you know uh, uh, the um, uh, employees and give them interviews because I'm like how am I supposed to give all these interviews and then you explain hey you know, group group interviews one day you know uh, we do it on Tuesdays and then you train someone to do it and you don't have to be involved in it anymore train then they train and so on and so forth I'm like this is genius. <laughs> and someone told me, hey, don't tell Mike, but uh, he is really a genius. Someone told me that, but they told me not to tell you that. So I'm telling you that. <laughs> uh, I've got this on recording. I'm going to share this with my wife. Look, other people think I'm really smart. <laughs> so what I'm hearing on the the hiring side was A, systematizing so you've got a funnel. B, once you've got it set up, turn it over to somebody else. And again, if you have a system, you can turn it over. If you're just doing it off the cuff, off the cuff and out of your brain, you can't turn that over. But when you've got a nope. system to follow, you can be like, I'll do it for a couple of weeks. I'll turn it over to the next guy. Exactly. The system, the systems in the hiring, the systems in the ads, the system, and and just like and and you know, the core values, you base all your systems are fundamentally based off of all those. And it's amazing. I mean, when you start to understand the systems and they're not really complicated, the market obviously can be challenging for somebody like me that's new to it, but it's not impossible. And it's not, it's not, you know, you know, like you said, I think it was, well, you uh, paraphrased it, but be around people that are smarter than you. That's how you get better. <laughs>
<laughs> it's how you get uncomfortable. That's not the fun part, but that's how you get better, which is the fun part. You're absolutely right. It's always easy to hang around with people that don't have businesses as big as you or the success that you want. You feel great. You get poor, but if you hang around with people that are doing better than you, you tend to succeed. Okay. I'm going to leave the last thing open to you. Any words of encouragement or advice of all of your experience? What's the, anything that you want to share with Cleaning Nation before we sign off? Uh, yeah. For those who uh, may, may be listening that are on the fence uh, with Grow My Cleaning Company, I would highly recommend them. Uh, and for those who are involved in a cleaning company, um, I would, uh, you know, whatever you're going through, whether it's the employees or the ads or whatever it is, there's different I- issues. Just stick to it. Don't give up. Keep pressing on and you will get there. It will happen. So, I mean, these people are smart and, and they've proven, you guys have proven that over and over again with different people. It's like, you just do what we say, things will work. Yeah, I feel like that was such a paid endorsement, but it was not. <laughs> Chad's here on his own accord. It was not. It's my own. Head. Nope. <laughs> no, I voluntarily <laughs> came on. Nothing. None of this was forced. None of this was pre-scripted or anything like that. This is all my heart. So, that thank you for sharing, Chad. All right. So, Clean Nation, um, a big encouragement to you guys is if you're not living the life that you want, try something different. Whether it's reaching out to us, or reaching out to somebody else, but just doing the same thing, you're guaranteed to get the same results. Just like Chad said, go down swinging. It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to make several mistakes. It's not okay to stop trying or just do the same thing and hope it'll magically get better because it won't. All right, Clean Nation, that's it. Appreciate y'all. If you want some help, go to growmycleaningcompany.com. There's nothing for sale, just a lot of free resources. And if you want some help, reach out to us. We got your back. See ya. Well, here we are, the end of the podcast, and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, share it with a friend, share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me in the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431, 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts, and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can, as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now, 602-932-6431. Give me a text, say hey, can't wait to meet you.